well, we've got to finish this off and then we've got to jump into the pale horse. And it's not going to be difficult to make that transition into the pale horse because there's a connection here and we'll see that not only in history, but a lot of the symbols kind of uh, interchange with uh, each other. So we left off with the black horse, the darkness. Uh, let's finish up a couple of the symbols there, the wine and the oil. Let's begin uh, with a word of prayer and let's just jump right in. Yvonne, would you have prayer for us? Sure. Father, thank you so very much again for allowing us to have another session where we can dig deeply into your word. And so we need your insight and your wisdom. And um, well, I just pray, Lord God, that you will be with us. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, we talked about Satan's seat. I want us to look at these verses. Jason, look at these verses. 1 John chapter 2, 2 18, 19, and 20. Okay. And we're gonna, this is really going to connect us mm -hmm. to the development of this man of sin and Satan's seat in the Pergamos area and the darkness right here in, in the horse. And then, Yvonne, would you look up uh, Mark chapter 14, 23 to 25? We'll just kind of touch on that and um, understand the, the wine. So we're looking at the phrase, the oil and the wine. What do they represent? What do they symbolize? Mm. <clears throat> All right. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are, they, are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. And going to verse 20. Mm -hmm. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Okay, read verse 27 also. Okay. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Okay, this unction is an anointing. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It means to be anointed with oil. That's what the actual Hebrew means. Mm -hmm. The unction means to anoint with oil. Hurt not the oil and the wine. The oil is referring to a time in 1 John when the Antichrist is raising up. People are going out from the truth. They're not out of it, so they're going out of it, they're going out of it, and they are uh, going into this darkness, whereas you're holding, because you have this anointing of the Holy Spirit, you're holding, and then he says this, and it's really interesting, he says, you don't need any man to teach you, because hmm. you know everything. Mm -hmm. Like, really? What? <laughs> uh, so we don't want anyone watching this program? What? <laughs> no, what he's saying there is, you don't need to rely upon men to teach you. Mm. God has put teachers and, and, and apostles and, and prophets and evangelists in the church, pastors <clears throat> in there, to teach. When a pastor or a leader teaches, that teaching should be based in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And when the congregation hears, they should be hearing the teaching of the Word of God so that they don't need the man in his wisdom to teach, they just need to understand what the Word of God is teaching. Mm -hmm. And when you're anointed with the Holy Spirit and you're listening to someone who's anointed with the Holy Spirit teaching, you're going to say, Amen. That is exactly what the Holy Spirit is teaching me this, this verse means. Right. Amen. But if you're not anointed with the Holy Spirit, you're going to hear and you're going to go, Wait a minute. That doesn't line up with the Bible. And then there's this separation that's taking place. And that's what we're talking about in these dark ages. You have people that are now all of a sudden compromising with paganism and they're going out of the truth. Mm. Now, when they says they're going out from among us, it's going out of the context of 1 John as the truth of the Word of God. They're going out from that. Mm. So those who are holding to the Word of God, because the Holy Spirit, of course, is the author of the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Inspired the words of God. Those people are not going to be hurt by that compromise. Right. They're not going to be giving up their faith. Their faith isn't going to be They're not damaged. going to be fooled by the compromise. <clears throat> So under the guidance, guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us the Spirit will guide us into all truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the wine uh, represents the blood of Christ. Okay, read those verses for yeah. us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's Mark. What was that? That was Mark chapter 14, 23 to 25. 23 to 25. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Uh, there's a, let me read that in another uh, um, 
uh, book, the book of Matthew. Okay. So I like how the book of Matthew puts really? it. Really? Um, it says, uh, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many uh, for many for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. And then the book of Luke says, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Mm. Now, I like that. Because, uh, you know, we talk about blood types and, you know, DNA <laughs> that's found in blood. Christ is actually telling us that his blood is special because his blood contains the New Testament, wow. the new covenant. Mm. It's the law of God. Mm -hmm. That's what the new covenant is, all right, my law. But it's the law in his blood. Mm -hmm. So he's like, the reason why my blood gives life is because the law is in it. So if you have my blood in you, Mm. Right? You have I mean, law you DNA? Get, is you that what have, you're saying? You have. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Absolutely. I'm getting from this. Absolutely. Uh -huh. You have law uh -huh. DNA? You have, uh -huh. Yes. You have his DNA, his law in your veins. And he's saying, okay, look, what is a table of showbread about? It's about the word of God. Mm -hmm. What is Satan attacking? He's attacking the word of God. Mm -hmm. If you have these two things, my, the oil, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, mm -hmm. and my blood, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of all this compromise. Mm -hmm. So he's saying... Don't let anyone, don't let anyone take the blood from you mm -hmm. because it is by the blood that we what? Overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need a blood transfusion. We need a blood transfusion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. And again, we're in the holy place. We have the, the spirit, which is the light, mm -hmm. the candlesticks, the oil right there. Mm -hmm. And then we have the table of showbread. Yep. So the sanctuary symbolism is right yeah. there. And on the, you know, on the table, I mean, we think about it when Christ sat at the, ta uh, at the last supper, he sat with 12 disciples, mm -hmm. right? And they were right there. And it's interesting how Jesus said, the hand that betrays me is with me mm -hmm. on the table, table or at the table. Mm -hmm. You know, that type of Judas mm -hmm. who, um, who was there at the table, he's a type of Satan. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Who right at the table, the mount of the congregation, the sides of the north, you mm -hmm. have this, this action of Judas who is betraying his Lord. Mm -hmm. And we find this very same principle that Satan is seeking to draw others away from the table. And that's what we're going to find mm -hmm. actually in, in uh, the fourth seal when we get there is Satan is ultimately attempting to draw the mind of the congregation, to draw the people away from Christ through a very <clears throat> ingenious method under the fourth seal. Mm -hmm. And there's a connection there. Go ahead, Jason. I like what you were saying earlier about not relying on other human beings mm -hmm. to learn the word. You have to mm -hmm. study it for yourself because even if you look back to uh, when Satan was tempting Jesus, if you notice, he always says, it is written because he knew it is written. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at uh, Matthew... Jesus would always say Jesus yeah. would say that. Yeah. And um, if you look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 6... Um, well, let's start with verse 5. It says, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and set, setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it, it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and uh -oh. in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, uh, again, thou shalt not tempt ah. the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to uh, Psalm 119, I believe it is, mm -hmm. that, you know, the devil throws in that 10%. He throws in, he might put in like 90% truth or 80%, mm -hmm. but he, he throws in that little curveball that mm -hmm. really throws people off. Psalm so. 91. 91. 91. You're talking about where yeah. he's quoting from, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Psalm 91, and I believe it was that verse 11. Um for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Mm. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So he, he left that part out, didn't he? Yeah, huh. yeah, conveniently. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, he left out part of the scripture. Which is why it's so important to study it for yourself. This is key right here. Yep. What we're talking about is key right here. We're talking about compromise. Mm -hmm. We're talking about relying on the Word of God, and then we're talking about Satan picking up on that, and he's going, whew, they're relying on the Word of God. I think I'm going to quote some of that scripture too, mm -hmm. misquote some mm -hmm. of that scripture too. And we talked about that in relation to new translations. Yeah. See, the Bible, we think we can think we're safe when we're in the Bible, but we have to know the Bible and what it's actually teaching. Yeah. Because Satan will come in there with Christ, he'll come in there and he'll quote scripture. And that's what Judas was a disciple. Mm -hmm. He was on the table with Christ. He was called the son of perdition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 2 Thessalonians, 
It talks about the falling away that's going to take place in the Christian church, yeah. the apostasy yeah. that's going to take place in the Christian church. Now, I want you to notice a phrase that is used here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And it's, it's, uh, it's a hard book to find. I'm even having a hard time finding it. It's, it's with the T's, though. Yeah, with the Timothy. And the yep. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Mm-hmm. And in, verse, in chapter 2 and verse 3, it's talking about the falling away. And it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that's an apostasy, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Mm -hmm. See, Mm -hmm. two places where that word is used. And so Paul in 2 Thessalonians is using the phrase son of perdition. It relates directly back to Judas. Mm. He was called the son of perdition, mm. which reminds us that his hand was on the table. This apostasy is going to take place side. in the mm. church. This apostasy is going to take place in the mm. church. Mm. Mm. So it's going to be an apostasy and a falling away from the truth in the church, mm. just like it was with Judas. Mm-hmm. That's the compromise that we see taking place here yes. in this, this darkness coming into the church. Yes. Okay, but the oil and the wine, anointed with the Holy Spirit, Relying on the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to be good. Let's go into Revelation chapter 6, beginning with verse 7 and the fourth seal. Oh, one more verse. As we're looking there, I'm just going to share this verse with you, just to summarize. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. This is 1 Peter 2. A royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should sow forth the praises of him who've called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. Out of darkness, out of the dark horse, into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. That's where we want to be. The oil and the wine, that's where we want to be. Amen. Okay. Jason, take us off here, or Yvonne, you haven't, we haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Get us going here. Get us going here. You've just been listening in awe. Get us going here in, in Revelation chapter 6, uh-huh. um, beginning verse with verse 7. seven. Yeah, okay. 7 and 8. Okay, 7 and 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Okay, Ivor, unpack this for us. This is, this is incredible stuff right here. So I think one of the first things that jumps out is that this horse is pale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when something or someone is pale, what does mm-hmm. it mean? They don't have a lot of blood. Sickly. No blood. Mm-hmm. Mm, no, no blood. blood. Oh, I like that. Just, okay. What? No blood. We just talked about the blood of we the Lamb, the, the blood of the covenant. Of the covenant. Right. So, so Satan, no. you know, it's like, oh, you know, attack not the oil or the wine. You know, that's how they're overcoming. Yeah. Then we've got to go for out. the blood. We've got to, you know, we've got. So this pale horse now represents an entity that has no life. That, that is against the covenant. It's draining out the blood of Jesus That's Christ right. out of its whole system. The blood of Jesus Christ is coming out. That's and right. it's putting in its place something completely different. That's right. Mm. So uh, it, it's interesting here that uh, we, this, the name of this uh, writer is called Death and Hell Follow Him. Mm. Death and Hell. So mm-hmm. we want to focus on, all right, whatever this is, it has to do with death. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with hell. Mm-hmm. Now, once again, just like we did in the previous in previous uh, studies, when we're looking at these seals, we want to we want to kind of get a reference of what time period are we talking about. Mm-hmm. The third seal we saw covered, you know, around the time of Constantine, and if we uh, parallel that with the churches, we're in the third church period. Mm-hmm. Third church, third seal. So the fourth church is going to parallel us with the, or I'm sorry, the fourth seal is going to parallel us with the fourth church, Mm -hmm. which is where we are introduced to a power called uh, Mystery Babylon, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, Jezebel, Jezebel. she's described as, but it's a symbol for Mystery Babylon. Mm -hmm. We know that Babylon represents the papal period that lasted how long? 1260 years. Mm -hmm. So now we're talking about error open error Mm. that would be used against the mount of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, here's what's interesting. Under the second horse, red horse, Mm -hmm. the persecuting power was anti-God, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to hold on when, you know, oh, the wicked ones are against us, Mm -hmm. right? But now, when you're not being persecuted by others who call themselves Christians, Mm -hmm. yeah, you begin to wonder, man, do I have this wrong or do they have this wrong? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, mm-hmm. so Satan changes his mask and mm-hmm. says, okay, mm-hmm. 
since I can't beat you, mm -hmm. I'm going to come on the inside and persecute mm -hmm. you from the inside. Mm -hmm. And that's going to do, you know, what that's going to do is going to make you wonder, am I wrong? Am I heretic? Am I, mm -hmm. you know, do I have this thing wrong? Yep. Mm -hmm. Why aren't I going with everyone else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I can't beat you, I'm going to hijack you. I'm going to take that's it. That's right. I'm going to take it. Yeah. That's right. Join it and take it. Right. So what do they do? Uh, they begin to, well, they alter the teachings of God. Mm -hmm. And and we believe that two teachings specifically that yes. they use to begin to misrepresent, uh, misrepresent God mm -hmm. to the mom of the congregation is and, death and hell. Yeah. To pull the blood out, to mm -hmm. pull the life out, to pull the hope out, to pull the, the, the covenant blood of Jesus Christ out of it was death and hell. And yeah. death has been completely distorted in the context of the Bible. The context of the Bible tells us all about death, how we are created, how we are formed, what happens when we die. It's very clear in the Old Testament. It's very clear in the New Testament. Death is like a sleep. Yeah. When you die, your body goes back to the dust, into the grave, and your spirit goes to God. Now, those two entities separate and that ceases to be a living soul. That person ceases to be a living soul. And when okay. you say spirit, because that's what people often get confused. confused. You say your spirit goes to God. Mm -hmm. People think, many people think, well, my body is here, but my spirit who knows and worships and does mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. goes to God. So right. how would you guys explain that? Spirit is like breath. Yep. Okay. The breath of life, the spirit of God. So when you say to someone, oh, you have a good spirit. Are you talking about, you know, some physical entity? No, you're talking about their character, their personality. Mm -hmm. That goes to God. God keeps intact our personality and our character. And this is a really, we were talking about this on the way down here. It was really interesting. We're talking about, so when Jesus returns, he's returning to resurrect the saints. Mm -hmm. Well, why would he do that if they're already in heaven? Absolutely. That's right. Why would he come back to the earth to raise this if they're already up there? And right. wouldn't everybody want to die then if you can yeah. just go yeah. straight? I can't there. wait to die. Yeah. 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 He asked people, oh, are you looking forward to death? <laughs> no, no, no one's right. looking forward to death. <laughs> right. We look forward to the resurrection. Right. Right. And this is what I'd like to share that, you know, Christ is our example. Mm -hmm. So the question is, when Christ died, did he die and go to heaven? No, no he yeah. died, was buried was resurrected mm -hmm. and then went to heaven. Yes. Ah. So if we just, if we cut out everything else and just, just look at Christ's Christ. example, good. Mm. whoa, good. To, in order to enter heaven, I have to die and then be resurrected mm -hmm. and then I go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So very simple then. You want to know if your loved one's in heaven? Just go dig up the grave. And if their body is still there, guess what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're still on the ground. Mm -hmm. and they are not, if, if the body of Jesus could be found, mm -hmm. what would happen to Christianity? Right. Yeah. Forget yeah. it. The, 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 the Christianity rests on the fact that there was an empty tomb. That's mm -hmm. right. If a body could be found, mm -hmm. Christianity is, is dead. Mm -hmm. So the same way then that Christ himself had to resurrect before he went to heaven, mm -hmm. so with us. And he still oh, rested good. on the Sabbath. And he still rested on the Sabbath. <laughs> mm -hmm. good. Right? And good. he told Mary on Sunday morning when she came and, and he showed herself, himself to her, he told her, hey, don't detain me. I have not yet ascended to my father. Right. That's right. But I must ascend to my father and your father. That's right. 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 So, so what, what the church began to do is they, they opened the way for hell mm -hmm. by teaching that a person doesn't really die. So now once, once they're teaching that a person doesn't really die, then they created purgatory, mm -hmm. which says, look, God sends you to a place of burning. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get out, just say some money. Yeah, give me some, give me some, money. some money. And what this began to do, mm -hmm. this began to change the picture of God mm -hmm. in the eyes of the mount of the congregation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now they're like, is this who God is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in essence, they were they were using death and hell mm -hmm. to kill, to wow. destroy. To distort God's character. And, yes. and think about it. The blood is no longer needed. Yeah. If, if our salvation is fully in the blood of Christ, in his perfect life and in his perfect death, his substitutionary death for us, but now there's purgatory, now there's merit, now there's earning, now there's pain, now there's uh, right. flatulation and, and climbing upstairs on your knees in order to earn God's merit and earn right. God's favor, then the blood is drained out. There's no longer any need for this blood. Mm. So right. this, this symbolism is really significant here yeah. because it's talking about how it was that the, the blood of Christ was 
was, was drained out in order for this whole misunderstanding of God's character to come to the forefront. You had to get rid of the blood. You had to oh, get rid boy. of Christ. You had to get rid of his mm -hmm. sacrifice. But in the same, in the same sense, maintain religiosity, yeah. maintain this religious front. And so it's not as though we're going completely out into the world. We still are religious. Yeah. So this but, is not the, this is not the red horse, right? The red horse is totally, we yeah. hate God. Yeah. The pale horse is, you know, oh yeah, we have a semblance of God, mm -hmm. but we just don't have any life in us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's some discussion as to whether this pale horse looked yellow, yellow, greenish mm -hmm. or, but if you're at a distance and you mm -hmm. put a white horse and a pale horse at a distance, mm -hmm. guess what? Mm -hmm. They would probably look, I mean, if you were at a distance, at a distance, mm. hey, which is which? You know, mm -hmm. one looks pale, which is which? So the pale horse is almost like a counterfeit mm. of the white horse. Mm. We're riding in the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're doing this in the name of Christ, mm -hmm. which, which is really interesting because when it says that this power killed mm -hmm. with the sword, mm -hmm. what is a sword in, in the scripture? Mm -hmm. It's the word of God. Mm -hmm. So they're now using the word of God mm -hmm. against the man of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Wow. They kill with hunger. Mm -hmm. You can't read the Bible. Mm -hmm. You have no access to the word of God. Mm -hmm. they, they kill with death, mm -hmm. what we just talked about. Yeah. You know, the whole concept and understanding of mm -hmm. death and purgatory. And they kill with the beasts of the earth. And mm -hmm. that's interesting because the beasts of the earth is a symbol of nations. And we know that the church used their military might and used the, uh, their authority over nations to yes. persecute Christians throughout the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at this persecution, but now coming from a, an alleged Christian source, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which ultimately leads, we're going to see this, is the pale horse. Mm -hmm. This teaching, this, this horse ultimately leads to total, total rejection of God. Yeah, in atheism. And we see that as we develop through the book of Revelation, we're going to see that in the trumpets. See, as you repeat and enlarge, there are certain insights that are, are you gain as you go further on into the book of Revelation, just like with Daniel. Each one of those chapters, those epics in Daniel 2, 7, 8, and 11, gets a little bit longer and a little bit larger with a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. When we get to Revelation 11, we're going to see all of a sudden now we're going to see a beast come out of the bottomless pit that we identify as making war against the two witnesses, Old and New Testament, making war against the Bible and God's people. Well, where'd that guy come from? Well, in the context of Revelation 11, he's immersed in the history of the Dark Ages, in the history of this papal system. When you distort the character of God, and you make him out to be this tyrant who is torturing people in a place called hell for all eternity or having them in a place of purgatory until they earn enough merit to get out, people turn away from that. They reject that. Yeah. And they reject the Bible outright because you're using the Bible to do that. So this produces, yes. this power comes out of this system that is completely denying the word of God. Mm -hmm. So remember the French Revolution occurs right at the end of the 1260 years. Mm -hmm. Right. It, that is what actually leads to uh, the, the papacy receiving this deadly wound in 1798. So the, the French Revolution and atheism, which rolls out of the French Revolution, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. atheism is the direct result of the papacy changing the picture, the image, the God. character of God, mm -hmm. draining the blood, mm -hmm. as it were, mm -hmm. from the gospel. And the end result is death and hell. And the end result is a total rejection of God. Yep. Mm. And we are living in that time. We've come now to, to, to the end, if you will, almost at the, as the rise of atheism, almost into the 20th century. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got, we've got this power rising up, you know, 1798, coming into the 1900s. So you've got this power, 1798, 1898, coming into the, to 19, you've got this power rising up in the, in the earth, and we're dealing with it today. So today, there are people that you will meet, that, that you'll sit next to on planes or, or you know, on, in trains or on buses, and these people, if they find out you're, you're reading your Bible, and they're looking at it like, oh, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm a Christian, you know, I, I love the Lord. Oh, I couldn't ever love a God that would burn people in, in hell for all eternity. I can never love a God like that. Mm. Oh, and the Christian says, well, I couldn't either. Mm. I could never love a God like that. I, you know, no, you don't understand. I, I hate a God who burns people in hell forever and ever. And the Christian says, well, well, yeah, I hate, I hate that kind of God too, small g. Mm -hmm. I would hate a God that would burn. 
wait a minute, that's, the Bible teaches that you're a God. You, Christians believe that God burns people in hell forever and ever. No, the Bible actually doesn't teach that. That's a distortion of what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. This is the pale horse draining the blood. Yes. We believe Jesus Christ was the one who paid the price for our redemption. We don't believe that you can earn salvation. We don't believe that God is going to punish us for all eternity. There is a place called hell. Mm -hmm. There is actually a hell, but it's not an eternally burning hell. And it's not burning right now. It's a, it's a time and a place that takes place at the end of judgment, but we do not believe in that. Really? See, we're living in a time when this world is inundated with this pale horse. Now, mm -hmm. the, the, Percy, the red horse is, is riding, and that's there too. And the dark horse, and that's there too. But the pale horse is something we just see millions of people being affected by right now. Mm -hmm. And we are going to see the white horse conquer, conquer all of these horses, continuing riding, continue to ride. And that's where we come in. We connect with Christ. We are hooked up with him, hooked up with that white horse. And we are called to deliver, to, to help people to see the light yeah. and the truth so, of the gospel. So the white horse is basically going forward to conquer those on the red, or mm -hmm. those who are of the red, those who are of the black, mm -hmm. and those who are of the, of the pale. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the white horse is to redeem mm -hmm. those people who have been either led astray or deceived in one way, or are persecuting persecuted. Yep. the people of God, yep. mm. you know? Paul. Paul. Yeah. Saul. Absolutely. Why persecutest thou me? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. We need it. We're, we're out of time again, but we are, our next program, what we're going to do is we're going to summarize this. So we're going to go right back. Uh, we're going to look at the four horses. We're going to look at a parallel parable and uh, we'll start with a quiz. We'll get these guys, you know, we'll ask them all the questions. <laughs> uh, we'll go back and forth like Yvonne the white horse and Jason the red and then the black and then the pale and then we'll get into so that. be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a heads up. You Pray have to our next program to get it right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. And if the, well, if there's any oh, questions. That's right. That's right. They can be submitted to sss at 3abn.org, as right. in salvation and symbols and signs. Amen. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, once again for being with us as mm -hmm. uh, we study and continue to learn about the four horses. The stuff is so deep. I mean, yeah. it, it just builds and builds and builds, but there's ways to verify it. And we, th we thank you for uh, making uh, your word clear to us and, mm -hmm. and uh blessing us with the opportunity to study with Pastor Rafferty and Pastor Myers, who uh, have gained a, a firm understanding of, of your word as well. Yes. Uh, please uh, be with us as we depart from here and, and help us to take what we learned with us. In Jesus' mm -hmm. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.